good morning everyone good morning. oh that's perfect thank you to keep the energy level high because it's a full packed day and throughout day lots of insight discussion and of course ideas advice comment lot of stuff we're going to have today and we need full of energy to absorb you know that's agni in the stomach we need to digest all the insights so please keep uh keep having that thanks for uh, you know uh, joining the ut 20, 2023 uh and uh, as you see the agenda it's full packed lots of insight and i am just going to share uh, what you call very basic uh, you know framework of what msme in india look like and what they're doing and what they need to make it big impact uh, in indian landscape so to start with let me talk about a very basic data point i think everyone's aware about uh, how much in you know indian msme contribute to the indian growth one fourth to non form employment that's msme contribute to one third to the overall gdp and half to the overall export these are some of the data i think most of anyways aware about put up by the government put up by the research house we uh, investigated we found the same analysis but that's how coming out moving on scenarios likely to change by let's say fi 2023 today msme contribute one third to the nation gdp expectation is to contribute half of nation gdp by let's say fy 2020 2030 actually we just postponed this target it used to be a something 2025 for a 5 trillion economy that's a dollar economy unfortunately the exchange rate have not played in our favor the rupee depreciated so that uh, dollar gdp is slightly lower now uh in that sense we are expecting msme to contribute 50% by let's say next 7 years which means every year out of 100 rupee produced in the country 70 rupees has to come from the msme including people in this room possible are we ready very very slow voice so let me support you with that that's possible because in 2017 the new startup or new company whatever basically we call it recognized company used to be representing in just 122 districts today last year plus to last year now the new company where we can make some impact we can recognize this good company covering 555 districts now almost 50% of the new company formation happening in the tier 2 tier 3 companies which means the new company formation is going what we call the true bharat and as not in just the urban cluster urban center is going into the tier 2 tier 3 cities which means we are spreading the wing every year new company formation every day in fact every day now it's 474 company get registered every day as compared to 460 last year in terms of the patent file the percentage of total patent filed in the country used to be 2.4% pre pandemic now it's 4.3% today in our database dnb database the global company comes they inquire about dnb database in order to get a trade partnership business investment anything the out of 100 inquiry they do in indian landscape 75% of that inquiry on the indian msmes which means look at the power they are looking for the indian companies to do the trade to do the business to do the partnership this or the global inquiries companies now ask me the same questions again are we ready to 
contribute 70 percent of the incremental GDP. Are we ready? Yes. Now this is powerful. Thank you. Now moving on, another challenge. It's not just contributing 70 percent to the GDP. India is going to produce what we call 1.12 billion population, what we call working age population. And there's a labor force uh, issue going on in the country. Currently, it's 52 percent labor participation rate. Idle, it has to be 70 percent. Then there is a what you call the people employed in the agriculture sector, and then the less women participation in the country. If we address everything, the growing population, historical inequalities, and the transition from the agriculture sector, we need to create. 231 million jobs in next 25 years. Who's going to do that? Incremental jobs. Large company? Certainly not. Government? Certainly not. I'm, I'm into a government organization. Then basically the heavy lifting has to be done by MSME. That's possible because what we need, we need money. We need investment today. Next 25 years, the capital requirement in the country will be 11.6 trillion dollar 11.6 trillion dollar today gdp is just 3 trillion dollar near about 3 trillion dollar you can see the multiple of gdp we need next 25 years as an investment that will help unfortunately today when we talk about the 100 company in the country 95 company forms in the, you know, what you call the micro, it's very tiny, very small company. Four companies are just small and medium, and just less than one company is a large. That's the distribution we have. Four percent is what the middle, uh, mid-size company or small size company, what we're calling it. SME, what we call just four percent out of 100 company in the country. That's the economic sense we call about the missing middle. That data, when we compare with some of the global counterparts, they have a 40%. So we are one-tenth of those companies, which means we need to grow. 11.6 million company needs to graduate to the small. 1.2 million company needs to go to the medium size. And 0 0.6 medium company needs to become a large company. And what the money need to do that, 6.5 trillion dollar required by the just micro company to graduate themselves to the small. 3.1 trillion dollar required by the small company to become a medium company. And 2 trillion dollar medium company needs to become a large corporation. That's how they will be not just able to contribute 70 percent uh, of the incremental GDP also employ something around 280 million population. That's the quantum of opportunity we have in the MSME space, but we need money. But when I uh, reach out to MSME last 20 years, at DNB we do, we reach out to the company and we ask, what are the basically challenges you guys face in order to, and that restrict your growth that restrict your performance and why you guys are not growing. Many, many reasons behind this. Many reasons. I think some of the reasons you are already aware about and some of the reasons might be new. The two critical uh, things coming out, the market SX, there's no customer globally or as well as domestically. Where is the customer? That's, that's a uh, problem. A second, it's a perennial issue, constant issue. 20 years, again and again, from a state to state, cluster to cluster, finance, what you call access to the finance. That's a, a challenge. And then rest of the problem issues are all put together is related to the company, productivity, uh, you know, domestic market, skill related, uh, you know, handling economic scenarios, and of course, capabilities of resources and other stuff. So that's all our company related. But two uh, chief problem is market access and then access to the finance. And there is a, uh, you know, when I pick up one problem here, market, uh, you know, uh, access to the market, and that's what I was talking about, you know, r roughly around $12 trillion when we need to grow. And there is, there is a genuine uh, challenge which I can appreciate. 
because this, as per some of the data we compile, I mean, these are the World Bank saying last year, when we compare some of the companies uh, in other countries, we picked up some of the rapid reformers companies, uh, countries uh, who can be compared with us because they started their journey somewhere in 1991, um, you know, separated from the Russia. We have Slovenia, Hungary, Czech, Poland, Latvia. The percentage of SME have some sort of a credit line in India, with just 15% of SME have a credit line as compared to the average in rapid reformers, 45%. Look at the gap, 30%. That's opportunity we have. That's opportunity for the lender. That's opportunity for the company to get those money to grow. And why? That's because I think something around 28% of the loan application get rejected in the country as against just 5% in the rapid reformers which means we have opportunity to cover up here. And why this loan get rejected? Various reasons. Your own health, your own balance sheet, uh, credit scores, a lot of things basically. And then of course the, uh, the requirement from the lend lenders. And third thing, as a result of the previous two slides, the gap between the interest rate charge to the small companies and the large companies is a huge. For example, if large company getting loan at a 5%, 5% is a dream, but I'm just assuming, if large company gets a 5%, the small company get a 9.7% in India, as against those gap is very narrow when we talk about other countries, look at the Poland, it's almost nothing. Large and small company get the same loan. That's a problem, that the cost of financing for MSME is high. That goes to be changed. But that's a lender side of the story. There are, these are the basically the economy side of the story. But when I turn the table, when we look at what is story going on with the company side, there's a different story. Uh, these are just some of the challenges we basically found that why, uh, you know, there's a gap in the financing need and financing availability in the market. You know, it's a credit score issue. And then of course the collateral requirement, uncertain cash flows, need to turn financially literate and then, of course, lack of credit info. Look at the distributions, almost flat. So these are the chief five problems. Why the gap between availability and then a need in the country? You know, I was talking about that when I turn the table and look at what are the problems within the company, why they are not getting the fund. Is it really a problem with uh, the market or is basically what you call the company. There's some, some uh, short of what we call a mindset uh, issue in India in terms of the company. There's multiple things. When I talk about the company as a whole, internal, so the lack of strong team and execution plan to support. Owners do not expect their role to evolve. Limited data that support the decision making in the, you know, for their own growth. This one bucket. When put together, these three things, it produced two outcomes limited ability to plan and deploy resources for the scalability and the high complexity in managing business operation. That, along with the other uh, box, that's the uh, right side, that look for the growth where the, uh, what you call the compliance is less and the quality initiative is always taken up when the customer expect that, or customer demand is not, is not a proactive, it's a reactive quality consideration, and the limited focus on the te technical upgradation, that's the other things. This outcome is coming, you know, again coming up after 20 years of the survey we have done within the company in DNB. And that result, what we call the limited interest in the business by the second generation, and then high dependence on the promoters to take a, any particular call. That's limiting what we call the growth restraining factors. That's basically, it's not a market, it's not a lender, it's not a government, it's a company itself. Company has to change that mindset that they want to grow. Why I'm saying, because at, uh, when I'm talking about 11.6 uh, million entity needs to become to the small, and the small needs to become a medium, and medium needs to become a large, Unfortunately, in the country, what's happening at a certain level of the growth, certain level of uh, 
revenue size, company split. There are multiple reasons. Some of the reasons are cited by, let's say, the customer expectation, the internal reason, external reason. Customer is, uh, you know, uh, I know that's called, uh, just to support customer need or just to go with the customer where they're setting up the plan, they split the business. So you have small and you split the business and you become a two uh, micro entities. And there's a internal issues as well when you talk about the complexity in the managing the large organization, engaging family members, equity infusion from the new stakeholders, businesses and finance availability. There are 29% spread across four regions that why uh, you know, companies split the business. And then the external factor that's called 26%. Look at this tax benefit, cluster benefit, infrastructure issues and to avoid labor issue faced by the large organization. These are the again survey done at a company level who basically say that why company doesn't want to grow. Fund is available, 15% or 20%, whatever you talk about. So there is something we need to change, that mindset as well as the company uh, focus that they want to grow from a micro to small and small to medium and medium to large. Otherwise, what the target we were talking about, 70%, providing employment to 231 million, that's certainly a dream. Now, the biggest factor, that's reality, the volatility in the cash flow. If I consider, if, if I benchmark large organizations, one, in terms of the volatility, look at the micro have their more volatile cash flow, 3.7 and 2.1 for the small and certainly 1.3 for the medium companies. Look at the volatility. Of course, that's, that creates a uh, lending dilemma from the financial institution perspective. That got to be changed. Now, there's another issue. If there's NPA happens, the recovery rate, recovery cost, recovery time, it's not that great in the country. We are better than some of the country, let's say, for example, rapid reformers, but I think we need to be covering in terms of the Asian Tigers. So we are somewhere in the middle, something, uh, some journey we have covered, but some journey we need to cover. Uh, because this will provide some support to the lender in the country to start lending to the MSME community or the company as a whole. When we correct everything, when we basically resolve the company related problem or the government or the overall financial uh, you know, space in the country, is a win-win scenario for everyone. So we looked up some of the data, two set of data, who get financing from the formal channel and who does not get financing from the formal channel. The company in the micro space get the financing from the formal channel. They produce 19% of the re return on the capital employed as against company who does not get finance from the uh, uh, what formal channel, that's 2% basically. Look at the opportunity across small and medium, micro, the SME space. If the company get loan or financing or the money from the formal channel, their ability to generate return on the capital employed is very high than the company who does not get uh, fund from the formal channel. Look at the opportunity. This opportunity is for everyone grow from a company side, support from the financial institution side. With that, I'll close my presentation. Thank you.